Greetings, dear friends. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We come together again, linking our hearts and minds in this circle that links all the nations around the world. Welcome to the Souls of Our Nations Creative Lab. To start our work today, I invite Annette to lead us in the alignment. Thank you, Sasha. And hello to everyone. So, <clears throat> let's bring our attention inward. With a few deep, calm, and regular breaths, we contact our inner center. From this point, we relax the physical body, calm the emotions, and free the mind from all thoughts. Let us now raise our consciousness upward. Expand it. And perceive ourselves as a soul. We are the soul in incarnation, fully present. Now we focus our energy and our consciousness in our heart. And in the fire of love that burns at its center. And while I call our names, we link our hearts from heart to heart, weaving the sacred tapestry of the group heart. Daniela Dot Efrat Grete Helen, Margot, Uta, Anne, Brigitte, Carlos, Carsten, Cheryl, Christine, Dacia, Darcy, Diana, Francin, Freda, Jillian, Isha, Jim, Jo, Jocelyn, Choke, Judith, Judy, K, 
Karen, Kiki, Kim, Kit, Leslie, Leah, Lynn, Margaret, Maria and Bart, Maria, Martha, Martin, Marcia, Maya, Natalie, Olga, Rebecca, Reiko, Robert, Sheldon, Shirley, Silvana, Susan, Tara, Tina, Wendy, Annette. Let's feel the energy flow within the united group heart. We reach towards each other's mind through telepathic mind waves synchronizing into group mind. We are a group and as a group, we link with our fellow workers around the world. A planetary connective web in service. We are a group and as a group we link with our guides and co-workers on the ashramic realm, tuning our group heart with the planetary heart center. As a group, together with our co-workers, we open up our sensitive antennas to the high energy of Shambhala, the center where the will of God is known. Tapping into this part of the divine plan that is intended for us. Now we recollect ourselves in our 
group field. Feeling this group being a part of the new group of world servers. And in gratitude and joyful service, we end the meditation. Welcome everyone to our fourth Creative Lab session for awakening the souls of our nations. It's very beautiful in these very strong energies to meet all of us. Thank you. This initiative seeks to foster the work of being instruments for the souls of our nations, especially to help small group units to form and learn how to work as a lens through which the soul of a nation may work. In previous sessions, we have put most of the emphasis on building a good base because everything depends on the quality of our group instrument. And for those who are interested, we are keeping records of our presentations and meditations, which can help with first steps. Today, because of the special occasion, we will focus on a central aspect of what goes into building our inner attitude in this collective work. And this is the state of the silent watcher. In simple words, maybe we can call it the ability to hold a dedicated space for someone or for something. Doing this by by having an all-round inclusive view. And today, let us practice this skill <clears throat> because it's the election day of the USA and this great nation is not only there for itself, but uh, whatever is happening in the US is influencing all of us. So we focus on it and we practice our skills on them, so to speak. We will hold space for and together with the group that is working with the soul of the USA. So they will share about their work. And then we will take the opportunity in our meditation also to practice, to be silent watchers for this nation at this critical moment. As many of us are aware, we are very much helped today in this work by an astrological, very important happening in the sky at this moment. It's a very special portal by the conjunction of two great planets, Jupiter and Saturn. They are, yesterday was the exact moment of their conjunction from the heliocentric perspective. Jupiter as the inlet of love in our solar system and Saturn the inlet of light and this conjunction happening 
in the sign of Aquarius. So this moment and the weeks to come is seen by many wise people as a portal for great new energy, for great energetic shift on our planet. And we can do our best to register it, to be part of it. Because when we succeed to tune to this high vibration, which we can do as souls, then it augments immensely our capacity to be inlets for the soul of our nations. It widens our vision and also our, the capacity of our hearts to encompass. So we also have Pluto still being for a few more years in Capricorn, finishing its work of breaking up the obsolete political and economic structures. And now we can ride this wave of greater love and light that is now combining in Aquarius to be like high power lenses through which the soul of our nations can pierce into the national field, providing inspiration and guidance for all agents of the new. So how can we prepare our group lens? One of the adjustments that we need to make is to develop uh, an awareness, an informed and inclusive and impartial awareness of what is going on in our nation. This sounds quite self-evident, but actually it's a delicate skill that needs to be developed through practice. Needs to be done as much as possible as souls, because this work is on the subtle level. We deal with the consciousness aspect of our nation behind the outer happenings. So we learn to look through the outer events and personages on stage to the inner dynamics, to the thought forms which propel a nation, to the atmosphere, the emotional atmosphere within the nation, to the subtle forces, etheric forces at play. And the more skilled we become in this subtle observation, the more details will appear to our vision on the various levels. And so the fuller and more comprehensive becomes our picture of the nation, the personality of the nation. And eventually, that's what we are working towards, we will be able to discern these underlying thought forms that are held in the collective mind. And we will trace them, see how they become on the astral plane um, an emotional climate, emotional patterns, and how from there they combine, com combine compound further into the outer events that are being played out by the players on stage at any one time. So a whole continuum of cause and effect becomes apparent to us. And this is what, what we are aiming for, what DK calls a completed point of view. And then the outer events are seen in this wider context, 
like our our vision kind of decontracts and these outer events they are seen as just momentary fixations or thickenings in a in a fluid continuum that is long and complex it takes an effort a certain inner muscle to keep this fluidity this whole spectrum and these dynamics in our consciousness and to resist this um, contracting this tunnel view on the fixated outer picture of, of the moment yes and we need to train this muscle to continue holding our wide angle view even in dramatic moments like elections So through our holding this continuity of the mental, emotional and etheric levels of a nation, we keep this space, we keep a channel and it can become a national antakarana, part of a national antakarana through which the higher consciousness can flow. In this way, we make our own consciousness, both as individuals and even more as, as groups, dedicated groups. We make this available as part of the national Antakarana. In times of, like now, of great polarization and climax and choice points, in the life of a nation this function of the silent watcher is especially needed and requires great skill when we as citizens are called to vote how can we perform this act as a soul as part of the conscious self of the nation because Ultimately, we must choose. We must choose a party, a candidate. We must throw our weight to one side. And of course, it's a choice based on values applied to that specific moment. But perhaps as important as who we vote for, Maybe how we vote, with what consciousness. When we succeed to resist the fixation on the outer result, when our main focus stays on the inner, on the consciousness aspect of the nation, then we remain inwardly free. And we leave the outer events free to form. We keep our own freedom and we also allow for the free will of the people. This avoids karma and we have a longer breath. We know that whoever will be elected will have to carry on the process. So, through this kind of sustained and disidentified observation of the consciousness aspect of our nation, we become agents for the national soul. And through holding this consciousness, this wide angle view, also for others, we help them, we enable them to do the same. So 
We can do this now to hold a loving space for our co-workers of the United States. And we will listen to what they share with us now about their work. Over to you, Dot. Thank you, Uta. I'm taking a deep breath as we take in the depth and breadth of your sharing. So thank you and heartfelt gratitude to the groups facilitating this series of creative labs that literally encourage us to realize the doctrine of the heart as we invoke the souls of our nations. Courage, age of the heart. And am loving that among the functions of the conscious self of a nation are these three things. Develop an inclusive awareness of what is going on in the nation. Become a lens through which the national soul can express itself and shine light on national issues and next steps. Formulate a vision which can inspire and guide the national consciousness. So here in the USA, a group of us daily are intentionally invoking the soul of the USA and we're grateful to have this time to share some thoughts regarding our shared intention. And let us say first that we adhere to this ideal of a stance of observation, even as we are participants in the process. So yes, being silent watchers. And the power of silence is so much greater than we know. Silence as action. In Rays and Initiations, the Tibetan master makes it abundantly clear that the battle of democracy will be fought out in the United States. He says, quote, true democracy is as yet unknown. It awaits the time when an educated and enlightened public opinion will bring it to power. Towards that spiritual event, mankind is hastening. The battle of democracy will be fought out in the United States. There, the people at present vote and organize their government on a personality basis and not from any spiritual or intelligent conviction." End quote. Our daily invocation serves to put an emphasis on the values of the soul of the USA. Thus, inherent in this service work is the renouncing of materialism, the recognition of goodwill as love in action, a spirit of cooperation, sharing, and kindness, in fact, harmlessness. As we see the emerging organization of government based on spiritual and intelligent conviction. The principle of freedom is saturating the consciousness of the people. We demand social and racial justice and healing. We want everyone's needs to be met. We want everyone to be respected and safe. And while we are experiencing a heightened tension and fear and anxiety is rampant right now throughout the USA, at the same time, we submit that perhaps the most significant realization of this moment has to do with the fact that this is an evolutionary process of soul unfoldment for the United States. And so we take that stance that we are not outcome oriented, rather process oriented, and choose to maintain the bigger picture, consistently taking a long view not losing ourselves in a snapshot of any given moment, 
on the personality level. And in this case, the personality of the US, for who can then say that a specific candidate must be elected or that something specific must happen in order to awaken the soul of the USA? As Uta just shared, this requires an all-round inclusive view in order to become conscious agents for the national soul. So what is required is loving understanding and education regarding laws and principles in order to assist with clear thinking and observation leading to wise choice to stand with and to serve with the forces of light. And we know these main areas, politics, education, religion, economics. Thus, regarding the specifics in the USA right now, with this critical election today, it seems clear that the personality of the USA is dissatisfied. We are called to e pluribus unum in this country of many, one. And we are struggling with this right now. Today, we choose the direction. This personality dissatisfaction is the ultimate good news from the soul's perspective, for as upsetting, chaotic, and destructive that period of personality unrest, resistance, and fight can be. It is aligned with the knowing that it is personality dissatisfaction itself that indicates a readiness to place both feet on the spiritual path. So we think the work we are doing with all of you to invoke the soul of the USA and the souls of all nations is an excellent use of our group efforts to cooperate with the spiritual hierarchy and the purpose of Sanat Kumara as the plan unfolds. As we seek to manifest right relationship in all areas of life on earth at a moment in time when all the great cycles are turning at once. And we are in a heightened time of planetary initiation or simply put an expansion of consciousness. Together as global citizens, we hold our shared intention that the USA demonstrate the beauty of soul expression and play out its true destiny on this beautiful planet we all call home. For this is, in fact, an election day for all of us, even as it is the US citizens casting their votes. So, in closing, we wish to share a thought about living ethics and the necessity of taking this to heart as a way of life. It is indeed our demonstration of living, not our opinions, that truly matter and that will have lasting impact. We cannot fix the broken system. It is not our job to fix the caterpillar. We celebrate the butterfly. And as we refine our ability to work with love, to demonstrate love, to offer love in the world with the understanding that nothing is ever what it seems to be, we contribute to global cooperation, peace, and freedom, all of which is in the process of emerging. In Fiery World 3, Sloka 137, we read, quote, the living ethics contains laws for the manifestation of truth. Life is affirmed in all the higher concepts. Thus, the creativeness of the living ethics directs thought to the construction of the essential. All strivings in the name of the living ethics will direct thought to future constructiveness. Indeed, not by words, but by actions will be molded the steps of the future. Each life-giving fire must evoke its own forms. Therefore, the creativeness of the living ethics can direct humanity to the light. The subtle world affirms its creative power, which is manifested for the betterment of existence. 
how great is the responsibility of humankind for all the engenderings which have caused such destruction. Each engendering in its turn produces its destruction and the planet is engulfed in stifling gases. Therefore, it is so important to assume a higher destination of life as a striving toward the true living ethics. It is impossible to bring into order the earthly and super mundane spheres without this purification. The present is revealed as the time for introspection and adoption of these great designations. For the battle between light and darkness is at hand. Thus, on the path to the fiery world, let us intensify our energies in the name of the living ethics. End quote. Deep appreciation for this opportunity to, to come together as conscious citizens, working together around the world as the truest reflection possible of hierarchy. We are indeed a miniature hierarchy, the microcosm reflecting the macrocosm at a moment in time when we know we are the ones we have been waiting for. And dare I say, we simply cannot afford to live in fear, to despair over outer conditions, to identify with outer circumstances, to allow ourselves to do anything less than acting in full concert with the spiritual hierarchy. Onward, upward, and through. Thank you. Thank you, Dot and group, for these high words. Yes, we cannot afford anything less. So we will take all this into our meditation now.